You're listening to Bigfoot Club podcast, Cryptid Sports Entertainers for Life. Hi, this is Robert Jesse Dominguez with Bigfoot Club. This is season six, episode 17. This is the second part of Caitlin Gonzalez's Three Haunted Houses episode. I hope you enjoy it. The last time we did a cemetery together, mm -hmm. which was that one here in Irving, mm -hmm. I I think, I can't remember if you were there or you had gone to the store. Did you go to the store? I went to go get a, I went to go get a milkshake. Okay. Hey. <laughs> So you, know sounds, to to, you know it sounds so, good with my ghosts. So <laughs> strawberry milkshake. It was, it was, I think it was me, Courtney, mm -hmm. and I think Candace. Yeah. And so we were, we were in, we had, we had put some tape recorders away in the back mm -hmm. and we, we were making our way up and then I was doing like baseline readings. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was facing not the street, but the side, one of the sides where the, all the, all the, the fence and the grass and the yeah. trees were. And yeah. so I, I thought I had saw Courtney like to my left, like mm -hmm. standing. And I turned to her and I said, Hey, I'm getting a reading because mm -hmm. I got, I got a little spike yeah. and it was nobody there. Yeah. Because I saw someone in the corner of my left eye mm -hmm. standing there. So I thought it was Courtney. And I turned around and she was like walking toward the front of yeah, the entrance. That's I, go, crazy. I go, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> so. that, that was the evening though that I was getting yes, no responses. Yeah. Um, back at one of the, the graves. Yeah. Yeah. So and I think that same time when we were there, I have, I have, so, and I think I played it on a podcast once. Uh, I had like someone singing mm -hmm. way in the back. Mm hmm. And and then I think I there was a, like a little girl singing, but it, it was it was kind of tied into I couldn't tell if it, I, I couldn't really tell if it was traffic yeah or it was her singing so it was somebody singing and then uh, it was just like someone talking like some mm -hmm. verbiage but you couldn't tell what they were saying. I actually just recently from the first time we went there came across I was on my old laptop and I found some of the videos from when we went and. I had a really busted camera at this point and yeah. so my camera would try to focus and the shutter you can hear the shutter so like this is in no way like proof that i would use to prove anything was happening right, right? just because there's so much background from that camera shutter mm -hmm. but i'll send it to you okay because in that video it's just me and candace all of y'all are at the front doing the estes method right and it was just me and candace at the back at ozell's grave okay and we're back there and you can hear me chatting with Candace and I can hear it. I won't tell you the timestamps, but I'll let you hear it yourself. Okay. And you can hear a man go, what? Just like that. And immediately you hear me go, what? And then I asked Candace if she heard that. I was like, did you hear something? <laughs> and then um, we're still recording. So you heard it. I heard it ear. there. I heard it there. So, and okay. then I heard a, ugh. And I literally said, Candace, stop. Okay. I'm going to ask this question. Okay. Was this before, before the, you almost stepped into the hole or was it after? This was after, I think. Okay. I think I had already stepped into, into his grave. Yeah. <laughs> I was telling Robert that, uh, I had a really nasty habit of any time I was at a graveyard, which granted it wasn't like I was at them frequently, uh -huh. but up until that point I had probably been at three or four mm -hmm. and no matter what, I always ended up stepping into a fresh grave. Like I would be so like focused on not stepping into one mm -hmm. and then my foot would sink in three inches to like one or one of them somewhere. And that it was has never happened to me. Every, it happens to me every time. And we've had our shares of going to cemeteries. Yeah. And uh, yeah. when it happened this time, the grave that I stepped into was uh, a gentleman uh, by the name of Ozell Ritter, mm. who died on my birthday two years prior. No, one year prior. It was one year yeah, prior. Yeah, one year prior. Yeah. That's a little weird. It was weird. And then we came to find out that our boss knew him. Oh, yeah. That's the one that, yeah. that you were telling me about. Yeah. Wow. That is... So we were we were telling we were explaining to her what happened, mm -hmm. and we were like you were saying I don't know his name was Ozel Ritter, and she goes what yeah what she goes I know him and she like looked it up real quick, 
oh my god he is dead yeah and i was like wow yeah so what are the i mean synchronicity at its finest yeah yeah that's and, uh and so in the in the video you can hear me and candace saying hey let's go meet up with the others and i had mentioned i was like yeah um i want to go back and check out the fresh guy before we leave again though the fresh guy. and so then my recording cuts off we had gotten the ovulus from the group up front and we had walked back because i wanted to see if we could get any responses on there uh -huh. and the, on our way back to to the the guy <clears throat> we get a couple of different answers one was score one was ball yeah and it said fresh and i never th i never thought about it so i rewatched that video, video and i was yeah. like that's what i called him was the fresh guy yeah uh and he was the ball boy for the dallas cowboys for some time at texas stadium so i don't know if ball and score were just random but that's the fresh that's guy freaky <laughs> yeah that's a little right on the nose it's a little, a little i don't specific. think i don't think that's coincidence yeah. at all <laughs> so fresh ball would you would you would you mind going back there that same place. Same I enjoyed place. that one. Yeah. I liked that one a lot. The last time we went back, though, it wasn't. It was kind of dead. That was the time that we went, and yeah. they, they had put somebody had <laughs> wow. put up. Uh, yeah. A good choice of words there. Um, it was kind of no, dead. The last time we went, somebody had put a skull of some sort up yeah, in the tree at the at the they entrance. Co they colored it too. Right? Yeah, it had some weird markings on it, and it's like and I guess it was a lamb, maybe. Yeah. But there's a skull tied into it the did, tree. It, it didn't look old either. Uh, -uh it would look fresh. Yeah. Huh? Oh, there's that word again. Uh, <laughs> it looked new. So th <laughs> the, I think the last time we went was like the one where I saw that. In the corner. Yeah. I still don't know. I have an idea where you say this is at, but I still don't know which cemetery it is. Here's the thing. It's, it, it's off Grotweiler. If you didn't specifically route to this place, you would never know it existed there. See, that's the thing. And I've been in Irving like uh, most it of my is life. It's perfectly surrounded by houses and warehouses warehouses yeah. you would never turn down this road unless you needed to go to this warehouse or, or you went down a wrong road and you didn't know where you're going yeah huh. you would never ever think about it yeah that one is i know when we went out the last time we got we got you know visited by the cops a couple of times they never stopped and talked mm -mm. to us they just they, they, they drove by they drove by and saw i us. took my niece and kennedy really out there yeah, by ourselves and not really anything. You should have called me, man. Um, I think I think you were busy. I was working. We nights. had planned. We had planned to go, and I, there wasn't really much going on there, except Kennedy swears he heard his dad. Wow. And Ken, that's when Kennedy was like, "Hey, I want to leave. I don't want to be here anymore." And so yeah, we packed up and we left. Yeah, I don't is he buried there? Mm -mm. No, this is. I think this cemetery is like prominent people who. Uh, like had something a, to do with Irving. Yeah, it's like a private cemetery. Like you, it's I don't know who which family owns it right now, yeah. but like you very much like you have to know the people to be buried. Like there. there's there's no address for it. Mm -mm. You, you you and I think we found. Does it, it have a name? Uh, it does have a name. It I does think. have a name, but I, I think it's the family's name. Yeah. But but it's not that's posted so, anywhere. That's so. I'm gonna be so mad. Like I go, oh yeah, I know where this is at. What yeah. the hell? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. man. So yeah. It's crazy. That yeah. is crazy. Uh, kind of want to go to that one. Yeah, it, it's a good one. I mean, we we got some. We I think you know I got a lot of gear too now. I got a lot of gear. I just realized that my big story, the one about like why I got into the payroll and everything, mm -hmm. also started because of a dream. Really? Yeah. Do tell. That's wild. Yeah. It, it's just coming in right. Um, I was fourteen. I just moved to Grapevine. Uh -huh. And it was me and my mother, and we had moved in with my, or we had all gone in on um, renting this place together with my brother, his wife, and their four-year-old daughter, my niece. Um, and we had all moved in, and when you walk into the house, the master is on the back left. On the right side, it was my niece's bedroom, which was the back right. Mine was the front right. And then my mother was in the converted garage, which was a second master. Mm. And this house was just never like a super comfortable place to be. Um, nobody else, and here's the thing, nobody else felt this way. It was a me thing only. Mm. I did not like being alone in my room. I didn't like being alone anywhere. I only ever wanted to sit in the living room if I was awake. Um, that's the only place I wanted to be. Um, but like my niece was little, never noticed anything, nothing, right? Um, and I would just notice weird, like little things, right? Like there'd be things like, you know, the air would kick on at night, right? 
you know, doors get suctioned and they move a little, but like my doorknob would rattle in a way that wasn't like shaking back and forth. Like my rattle, my, my doorknob would like turn, like it would turn, like it was clicking. Like, and I could hear the lock, like the little thing that juts out, Yeah. but my door never opened. Right. And so everybody's like, well, it's just the air. Right. And I took, no, <laughs> I took the doors off of my closet because I didn't like the fact that it was like those bifold double doors. And even if you closed them at night, it would always be open an inch when you woke up in the morning. I said, eh, we'll just take them down. Not a problem. Take them down. Don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um, things would just like move around in my room. I had these wall stickers, um, that were mirror wall stickers and they'd be up on, it, it said, always kiss me. Good night. And it had little butterflies and they were all little mirror stickers and they would stick on this wall. Right. Cause my bedroom, the front was the front of the house, right? That's mm -hmm. the wall I had everything on. And I would wake up in the middle of the night uh, or in the morning or whatever. And these, at least a good portion of these stickers would be off of the wall and like stuck to me, like onto my clothes. And I had always said like, that was so weird. Right. Mm -hmm. And everybody's like, well, it's the front facing wall. It gets a lot of cool winds. Like, and it's a textured wall. It's just the stickers aren't sticking. Right. Except like it never happened on the other side of the wall by my vanity. And if my cousin was staying over and she was sleeping against the wall, it would happen. Never happened to her. Really? Never happened to her. And I was like, okay, well, we'll just take them down, right? Because I'm very much like, we're just not going to talk about it. We're just going to yeah. take them down. We're going to remove the, right? Because I'm very much, that's the way I was raised, right? We're just going to ignore it. But I couldn't ignore what happened. Uh, that changed my entire perspective on, I mean, everything, everything supernatural. Um, I was never a really big dreamer, right? I didn't have nightmares and that sort of thing. But um, I don't talk about this like at all. Like I, when it, this all happened, I told a couple people and there mm -hmm. are people that know, but like, I don't talk about this at all because every time when I used to talk about it, things would, things would get weird. Um, I had a dream one night and this was probably the most in-depth long dream I've ever had in my life. Like mm -hmm. this was like a full feature film type shit. Okay. In my dream, I was a man and I distinctly, I was a white man, mid thirties, uh, maybe like five, eight, five, nine. I had a brown beard, brown eyes, brown hair. Um, and in my dream, I'm wearing a red t-shirt and straight leg blue jeans and boots. And in my dream, I was in the kitchen with my wife at a house that we had just moved into. And my daughter was sitting at the kitchen table, right? I'm a man. I have a wife. I have a daughter. My daughter is pale, but she is sitting at the kitchen table. She's in a little white nightgown. Her hair is unkept everywhere. She's eating cereal, right? My wife is in the kitchen unpacking a box of mugs, okay? Uh, somebody knocks on my door. I go to talk to them. It's my new landlord, you know, welcoming me. Welcoming me. We're just chatting and everything. Uh, they leave, and I go back into the kitchen, and my, my wife is gone. And so I ask my daughter, hey, like, where'd mommy go? And she goes, well, mommy went upstairs. And I said, okay, well, you know, let's go, let's go find mom. And I have a camcorder, right? And this, this dream has to take place at like early nineties mm -hmm. because it's one of those little janky handheld, yeah. like small situations, right? Yeah. The thing flips open, you hold it with one hand, it's got a little screen and you walk around. Yeah. And I've never been a lucid dreamer. I've tried because I always thought that was super cool, you know, being able to manipulate your dreams. Um, but I am aware at this point that something is wrong in my dream. Not that I'm a man and that's a problem. Mm -hmm. It's I walked up the stairs and this is our little town home. And this hallway is bright white, 25 doors deep. It's a huge hallway. And in my head, I'm like, Hey, this is not right. Right. If I'm, Hey, I'm cool with being a man in my dream, but yeah. the hallway is <laughs> wrong. Right. <Yeah. laughs> and so it's me and my daughter. We're walking side by side and I've got the camcorder and I'm like, let's play a game. Like, let's find mommy. You know, we're making a cute little home video. Uh, we start opening the doors and it's 25 on each side. Right. So in full, it's a hundred doors and I would zigzag back and forth to each room and every room was exactly the same. I would open the door and you would walk into the room and the door would be centered that the one that you entered was kind of like offset in the corner, the, the left corner, you'd open the door, it would swing inward and it was a white room. It had a closet door on the left wall, close to the corner and a window close to the corner. 
nothing in the rooms white walls white floor that's it and we start going back and forth back and forth and about halfway through my daughter's not with me anymore and i was like okay well now we're looking for both of them right i still have my camcorder i'm opening every door i'm panning around there's nothing right i get to the last door and it is the last door on the right and i know there's going to be something behind this door Mm. i don't want to go in there first so in my dream i open the door and i try to put my arm around the door jam so i can see with just the camera screen the camera screen yeah and i get pulled into the room like by my arm i'm pulled in and this room is giant it's cavernous and it's dark i can't see any distinguish distinguishable figures or features of the room but my daughter's standing there she's kind of blurry i can't really see her but i can see like we kind of like you know like an old tv right yeah um and my wife is there um but it's not my wife um it is a thing that is trying to look like my wife it is very tall um it is female it's got long stringy black hair um no eyes it's just these black pits not like the eyes were black i mean like it was just eye socket there was nothing there small little dainty nose uh, really gaunt cheeks and a jaw that hangs down to mid chest and so many teeth that it doesn't make sense like there's no way this many teeth can fit even into this disgustingly large mouth i mean it's just teeth right um it's wearing a white shift dress um kind of just a straight dress uh got straps but it's sleeveless um hangs down to mid knee and it's kind of dirty kind of grungy um and then it's pale knees and feet and it's like dead skin like it like the pal you know what i'm like the dusty pallor of of a dead body right Mm -hmm. like it's there's no vibrancy no blood behind it and she's kind of leaned forward on her hands but she's standing up because her arms are long. are long, so long that her finger, her fingers are touching the floor. They're resting on the floor, kind of like you know, like a monkey does, you right. know. And her fingers are long. I can see her fingers like curved all the way back under, and they're long, like long, long fingers, six inches each, like long. And doesn't say anything. It's just standing there, looking at me. And it reaches out and it wraps its hands around my, around my waist, one hand, and the, it, the hand is so big that it wraps all the way around me picks me up throws me down a set of stairs i'm falling through the set of stairs there's fire everywhere it's hot i'm hitting the ground and i'm rolling and i get to the bottom and i'm laying at the stairs there's fire everywhere and i hear i can't even describe to you this voice because it was like a million people talking to me at once but it was one person Mm. and it was just the most terrifying thing that i would ever heard in my life and just at the same time that it was loud and filled the room it was like it was right in my ear and this thing i, I want to say that it felt male but it just so deep you're gonna rot in hell forever is that, that is that what it said to you that's exactly what it said to me <clears throat> you're going to rot in hell forever and i woke up in my room and i sat straight up like i sat straight up and i'm like i'm sweaty i'm panting or whatever and for a split second, because remember, I've never seen anything visually. For right. a split second, I see a tall shadow in the corner of my bedroom. I get up, I rip my blankets off, I'm crying. I run to my mom's room, and I'm like, wake up, I'm hitting the door. And she's like, what's going on? I'm crying. I was like, I just had the worst dream that I've ever had in my life. Like, this is this is horrific. Like, please be awake with me. Um, stayed awake all night. I had a really rough day at school the next day. Mm -hmm. Um, Came home and I told my mom, I said, I will not sleep in that room again um, until we go and get a dream catcher. I was like, that was the worst dream I've ever had. I don't ever want to experience anything like that again. Um, And this was on a Wednesday. So for the next two days, I go to school, I come back. um, And suddenly the only place that I want to be is my bedroom. I had never wanted to be alone in this house, right, but I, mean, you that. I would go home and I would sit in the living room and I would just feel like I can't be in here. I have to be in my room. The only place I want to be is in my bedroom. I don't want to talk to anybody. Leave me alone. 
I'm going to be in here because this is where I need to be. I have to be in my bedroom. And it, it was weird, but it wasn't anything that I was like super paying attention to, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I would stay in my room until it was time to go sleep in my mom's room. Cause again, I'm not sleeping alone at this point. I won't do it. Um, except the one night that freaked me out was Friday. And the next day my mom was going to take me to the store is I had gotten home and I had laid down in my bedroom before dinner and I was laying there and I remember, and I didn't have a TV in my room, right? So I'm literally just laying there doing nothing. I'm just laying there. And I remember saying to myself, Hey, you need to get up and go get your iPad. Cause it's in, it's in the living room. And I remember sitting there and I was like, get up, like, get up, get up, get up and go. Yeah. And it was like, I just, I couldn't move. Right. Like I was, I, I, I could not make myself get up. And I woke up five hours later and it was the middle of the night. I woke up my mom and I said, Hey, like, why didn't you wake me up? Like, you know, I don't like sleeping in my room. She was like, I tried to wake you up. You were just so tired. You didn't want to get up. And I was like, I didn't want to eat dinner or anything. And she was like, no, she was like, Caitlin, you wanted to stay asleep. So I just left you in there. And that was when I was like, hey, like maybe something's wrong. Like, I, I think that we need to probably go and get this shit handled like immediately because it scared me. Right. Yeah. Um, and from that point on, like, I just I never I, I even then like into my mid 20s, I won't sleep without a dream catcher. I've had if I've been traveling, I remember you, I remember you saying that. I won't. Me. I won't sleep without one because I am genuinely terrified of having that dream. Like the thought of reliving that is yeah. that was one of the most horrific things that I've truly ever. Did lived. you Did you feel like it was real whenever you were going through it? In the dream, you feel like the heat. I, I was that. I was that man. Like I was being sent to hell, like straight up. And I don't know what kind of meaning that was because I have never been particularly religious. Maybe maybe it was like the guy that used to live there. All I know, and it, it butted up to a church too. The back yeah. the backyard went up to a church, but it was it was truly horrific. And uh, I had I had drawn her it that one time mm -hmm. um because somebody had asked me if i could you show them what it looked like and it's just like i did it one time and then tore it up threw it away and anytime anybody ever like i like i can describe it to you but like my heartbeat is like crazy yeah, right I, don't, now. I don't remember you were telling me the story i i will not that's probably one place i won't go back to i won't go back there um and i don't I, I won't i won't do that is, is it Arlington? That one's in Grapevine. Grapevine. Okay. So there's and two. There's two Grapevine. Uh, bleh, two Grapevine houses. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, how, that, how old were you then? Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. I was fourteen. Um, and from that point on, like, I stopped sleeping in that room. Like after I got my dream catchers, like I would hang it on the wall briefly when I was in the living room, and I would sleep in the living room, or I'd hang it yeah. in my mom's room. I never slept in in that room again, and that was truly one of the like. Was it an older house or a newer house? Do you, um, know, do you think? Just just off of what it, the way you think it looked. So it was a lot of like Spanish tile. Like it was probably like two thousands. Not okay. super, not super old, but not like okay. most current. You know. Yeah. Um. But yeah, and then anytime I would tell people this story, because at the time I didn't mind, right? Things would happen, like like the day after, or um, or that night. So usually that evening, wow. like stuff in my room would start moving around again. Uh, my radio would come on. Uh, it would just be really like just weird things. Right. Um, I wish I still had this video. I had gone out with a couple of friends of mine. We went hiking and then we went back to his house and ordered pizza. And we were just kind of talking because he thought his house was haunted. And I was like, well, we should let's just set up a recorder. Um, your phone because iPhones are a big thing. Right. I was like, and let's just we'll just hang out and we'll he thought it was a kid and he was like i feel like it's a little kid right mm -hmm. at this point i think he was talking out of his ass right but i was like well let's set a ball right here at the end of this hallway and we'll just we'll just record this you know while while it's happening right and as we're sitting there we're talking we're all talking about why why we believe in ghosts and all that kind of stuff and i start telling them this story and the entire time there there's five of us the entire time you know we're all talking nothing's happening and I tell my story last, and the second I start describing the thing, that's what we'll call it, is the thing, um, the camera, the whole, the whole iPhone wiggles like this, like the video. Yeah. And when we had watched it, right, uh, he was like, that's like, it was balanced against a, a Kleenex box, like what, Yeah. you know, on a TV tray, 
at, in front of this hallway. He's, they don't have a dog. They don't have anything. Um, and the way the camera was wiggling, like the phone should have fallen. I yeah. Think, you know? And, you know, or I would tell the story and things would slide off of my shelf. And it's not like things would topple over and they'd fall on their side. Like things would literally like slide, drop straight down. Um, That's a lot of power. Mm-hmm. It was it was a very, very weird house. Like it was tons of windows. The whole house was tiled. But it was like no matter if the windows were open and everything, it was just a dark house. Like there was never enough natural light. Like there was a whole sunroom and you could sit in the sunroom and it would still feel dark. Like there was never, we always had to have lamps and stuff on. Um, weird. How, how do you feel about telling that story now? I don't like it. Like I don't. I don't talk about it. Right. Um, do you I don't. Think, do you think something's going to happen tonight? I hope not. I've had very few things happen in this house. Right. Um, you got. You have crystals now, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I keep the one like my protection crystals right next to my bed. Right. Um, I also have like very clear. Anytime I bring in, I'm a, I'm an antiquer, right? So I have a lot of old things, mm-hmm. a lot of old right. photos. Anytime I bring something new in, I'm also like, hey, like this is my space. Right. This is these are the rules type situation, you know. Um, and the last time I had something weird at the house, I told you about that. Yeah, how it was right. messing with my shelf. Yeah. And the next morning, I said, "Do not touch my shit ever yeah. again. Do not touch yeah, my stuff." Yeah, I, I do recall us talking about. It. I see you should command it not to do that. And I said, "Do not mess with my stuff." Yeah. Um, and so this house was just super weird, right? And but no, again, nobody else had any issues with it. Not my six year old niece, you know, because at this mm. point we've we've lived here for some time, right? Mm. Um, she's grown up a couple of years mm. nothing does yeah. not matter to her um my brother and my sister-in-law never said anything my mom never said anything um but they ended up moving out and it was just me and my mom we stayed my mom took over the master i took over the converted master and i never went back over to that side of the house, the house yeah. i wouldn't do i wouldn't go back over there and you, you were you were in uh, puberty then right mm-hmm. so yeah and I, people would come over and i i was never alone if my mom was working i had at least two or three people over with me i would not be alone in that house and if i had to be i would wake up when my mom was getting up at six to go to work i would go to the kitchen grab snacks for the day and then lock myself in my room because i would not be alone in that house did you did you find yourself like having anxiety while you were there not really okay. like if i was in my room i was fine yeah and like that's what it was though is that you had your own bathroom mm-hmm. 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 okay well, yeah then. other than that i would not i i would not go i'm just into curious the big part of the house yeah, i'm just curious where like like I, like I said before where the power comes in from the street yeah you know, where the fuse boxes were at mm-hmm. if you had you know old old uh air condition that has like a kick-on capacitor Maybe. stuff like that um well, so like my mom only one time had an experience here mm. at this house and this was after my brother and my sister-in-law had moved out right and i had there had been a storm the night previous so i did sleep in my mom's room that evening um and this was before i had gotten into the converted master this was pretty soon after my brother and my sister-in-law had moved out i hadn't moved all my stuff over i was about to go on a road trip with my dad um and that road trip was had some weird stuff going on too but i was i was going to be gone um and i had slept in my mom's room because of the storm and my mom was making breakfast it was a saturday and the way the kitchen was there were two entrances like a, an open entrance by the front door and then one that led into the dining in the in the living room and my mom was making breakfast and saw me walk past the first door and she called out to me asking if i was ready to eat breakfast and what i wanted and i didn't reply and so then my mom was like caitlin and i didn't reply and so she went to where she thought she walked around the corner i wasn't in the living room she thought i went back to my bedroom went to my bedroom i wasn't there it went back to her room and i was still asleep doppelganger she says she swears she saw me um and like you would come home sometimes and like the couch would look like somebody had just been laying there like it would be like divided in Mm -hmm. um and the radios would come on by themselves and it would happen to my mom frequently my mom would have her radio which was in her closet come on and I remember one time I was sitting on the couch and the radio came on and I like made a joke with my mom. I said, okay, that's on you. You better go figure it out. And I said, go turn off your radio. And so she went to her room and went to the master closet and she came back out and she goes, Caitlin, that's not my radio. That's your radio. And my radio is a much older one. And so with mine, mm-hmm. um, I still have this radio, by the way. Um, oh, geez. You can't 
turn up the volume when the radio is off um and then turn it on and it blasted right you had you would have to turn it on like it none of yeah. the dial none of the functions worked if the radio was off right so she goes caitlin it's your radio and it's blaring right so i can hear it from the garage which is where my room was it's blaring and i i i'm a person of schedule right my mm. my radio stayed on at the time when it was still the edge 102.1 yeah, that's what I listen to every night, and my radio because I did. It can't be too loud, but I need to be able to hear it. Would be set at fifteen. That was the that one hundred two point one set on fifteen. Right. I walked into my room and my radio is on thirty, and it's blasting, and it's it's on like ninety nine five, the wolf or whatever, mm -hmm. and so it would have had to have been turned on. And then both dials spun to get to that station and, and that volume. volume. Yeah. And so I remember I like I would and I was mad. I was so angry. I like ripped off my cord to shut it off. And that was this is the first time I'd ever addressed something out loud. And I said, Do not ever step foot in my fucking bedroom again. I was like, This is my space. You are not allowed in here. Do not touch my shit. And that was the last time anything ever happened in that room. Things would still happen around the house, but never in that room in my bedroom again. Yeah, and that's good. why that's why it became my safe space. Like good, good that's you. where I would sit. Right. The, what's good is that this thing or entity uh, knows boundaries. Yeah, you, oh, I was you, so angry, man. I was so I remember I I was so mad. You, you probably had so much energy at that time. Oh, dude, mm -hmm. it probably it was, you were probably like a Roman candle. Mm -hmm. I was I was pissed. <laughs> were you pissed that uh, that it it violated your your safe yeah, space? Yeah, like don't or don't more, touch my stuff. Or more that it changed the, from edge to the wall. You know what? Yeah, it's a fucking country, that bitch. Yeah, I love you more now. I was so I was so mad. You son of a um, bitch! Don't you ever put it on country? And so and like, even my friends that were with me, like because all my friends would sleep in my room and all that kind of stuff like nobody nobody else ever said that they had issues yeah it was only ever just me and i hated that house we left and it was life-changing for me like i was so happy when we moved but you were you were interested in the paranormal yeah you? that's when i started researching and looking into that kind of stuff so. because uh, here's the thing even if it was a dream right i give it a lot of credit um it was the most terrifying thing i've ever experienced there is literally nothing else that has happened to me since i've started diving into the paranormal yeah. that scared me like that and i don't think there's anything that could happen that would incite the exact amount of like i i, I well right knock on this fake wood mm -hmm. um when i tell you that the voice that i heard like i can't accurately describe to you what it sounds like you still remember it though right? I, it is the most visceral reaction i've ever had to hearing something in my life like that mm. was the most horrifying experience i have ever gone through and like it's it's truly horrific like i would not want anybody to have to deal with whatever that was yeah. that was talking to me. I, I I couldn't even try to try to uh, probably try to dissect that dream at all. Well, I mean, I, she I, said that she saw a shadow, to, a tall shadow. Yeah, when I woke uh, up, when you for woke a split up, second, yeah. and, and then, then it, it was gone after yeah, that. Yeah, never saw it again. And I had had a mannequin in that corner though that I used to hang my jewelry on, and so I was like, okay, well maybe it was nothing, right? But it was just so tall like i remember i literally and here's the thing i also wore glasses right so i woke up bleary eyed and you know everybody's like well it was just your mannequin and i was like well okay yeah maybe maybe but i just remember it was so tall like i was literally like i sat up and i was looking up in the corner and it was just there for a split did second you, did you have to run past it no mm -mm. thank god no. Right. good thing no so my bed was like up against the wall caddy corner like this mm -hmm. Um, and so I got up, bolted straight out the straight door, that way, you yeah. know? Okay. Um, yeah. And then it didn't help that like at this time, like my niece was also like right into her imaginary friends uh. thing. And so my niece had this imaginary dog, uh, that she called him Pon Kandaris. What? That's, that's a strange name. What is this? Uh -huh. Pon Kandaris? Pon Kandaris. And he Pond. was a black dog with red eyes. She mm. said he came from very far away, um, and she would, like, track where he would be as he was, quote-unquote, walking. 
um one time i was sitting in my room and she came in and she was like can i come in and i was like yeah she goes well can pon Kanderis come in too and i at this at this point in time i'm like yeah he can come in and i just remember uh. her sitting on my bed and her watching it walk and i was like okay you know what never mind you and you and pon gotta go you know and I remember one time she was she was so angry at me for something. She'd gotten in trouble. I'd taken away her iPad or whatever. She was so mad. And I remember her going, that's why I, I'm going to have Pon Kanderis come and scratch you tonight. She was like, because he hates you. And I was like, oh my God, this black dog with red eyes hates me? That comes from very far away. I was like, it's a hell on. What is this? Like, that so was natural. horrific. That kid was wow. creepy as a kid. Did you ever get scratched? No. No, I was like, don't. Do you, do you think this was, this was Pon Kanderis in the corner? I don't know. Because he already hates you. Why? I, I, that's the thing. I, I'm assuming because she I, she was in trouble. But no, she said it like he already hates you. Yeah, bro. So I mean, I'm a. I don't know how much you believe in this. I but fuck that dog. Bro. Yeah, I, I don't know how much you believe in this, but I think any, anytime man. you you invite something in, it comes in. Well, but like at the time, obviously, I didn't think about it, right? Because right. she just said, "Hey, can Pon come in too?" Right. And I was like, yeah, you know, you bring your imaginary dog friend in. But was that before? That was before, yeah. All this stuff happened? Mm hmm oh, That makes sense. But, you know, I don't know. That's just but, conjecture. And then, it's just conjecture. Right, who knows, right? And here's the thing. Like I said, the dream itself might have been supernatural. There were things that were happening in that house that I can't explain, that I've mm -hmm. tried to explain. But I'll say that that dream is what kick-started me into the interest. Right. Because, again, like I said, that was the most horrifying thing that had ever happened to me. Um, but... Yeah. How old was your niece there? Uh, so we moved in there somewhere between four and six. So yeah. So and then in the dream where you were this man, how old was your daughter? Around the same age. Mm. Um, but yeah, and then I remember one day we were, we had asked her where we were sitting at. All of us were eating dinner, and her mom had asked where Pon Kanderis was because she hadn't talked about him in a while. And my niece just goes, yeah, it was time for him to go to a different family. Okay. That's weird. Huh? Yeah. He just left. He never came back. She wasn't sad? No. No, she was like, he, he came from far away and it was time for him to leave. Just okay. A black dog with red, red eyes. Red eyes. eyes. Mm -hmm. And Pon Kandares, what is that? What, yeah, what a I'm, name. I'm, I'm going to look it up tonight. Uh, so. What a name. It, yeah. was, it was so, I just... And everybody thought it was so funny, and they laughed about it when she had told me that, you know. It's, it's I, definitely a, a weird, like, goofy name, but... Well, I mean, his middle name was Snowy, and his last name was Fulcrod, so... Oh, he has a full-on fucking name. Yeah, her last name. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. So, Snowy? Yeah, I don't know where that one came from. I was like, but he's black, right? She yeah. was like, yeah. And I was like, okay, well, whatever. Maybe he was... He was chilling. <laughs> I mean, she, she liked him, and he... Obviously, apparently, I was the only problem here. Yeah. But yeah. All because I kicked him out of my room. I should have just let him sit on the bed. Yeah. But then I wouldn't be interested in the paranormal. Look right. at us now. Yeah. But yeah. And then just things would be weird in that house sometimes. And I just didn't enjoy it that much. That was the house that my mom had the dream about um, my dead cousin's yeah, okay. grandmother dying. Yeah. Right. And she saw it ahead mm -hmm. of time. That's weird. Yeah, and then, like, I mean, occasionally people would say they, they didn't like sleeping in that back bedroom. Not my bedroom, but the back bedroom that used to be my niece's. But nobody else had any sort of, like, it felt weird that nobody was as terrified as I was. Because I hated that. I The day we moved was a relief. So how many houses are all together that you had experiences at? Um, so... Uh, Like I said, I didn't really have a lot of stuff happen when I was younger. So it would have been the house with the thing behind my door. Mm -hmm. um, it would have been... There was a house where nothing had really happened, but that was the first time I played with a Ouija board. That one was kind of weird. But that wasn't, you know... It wasn't my house. It was my neighbor's house that the, the things right. were going down. So technically, I didn't live there. But there was a situation where a friend of mine... Uh, her mom had a Ouija board and had told her not to play with it. Yeah. Her mom was gone, and so she was like, hey, let's play with it. And I was like, I don't know what this is. Sure. And, uh, like, she then told me that, like, stuff in her room started moving around, and I was like, oh, that's weird, and then never talked about it again. Yeah. But, um, so, I've had something going on. 
like very occasionally in the house that I'm in now. Mm-hmm. There was only one experience at the second house I moved to in Grapevine. Okay. The big Grapevine house and the the Tina house and then my grandparents' house. So five? Five. Wow. That's uh I don't know. I think I think you you attract this stuff. It was weird. Yeah. Does anybody live in that house where you would do not go? Want to go? Uh yeah, they sold it. Yeah, people live there. Hmm. Yeah, I won't drive by it, but I know that I know from the neighbors that my mom knew that they ended up that that it. bad. You won't drive by it. Mm-mm. No, I, I hated that house. Like mm. I was so happy. That's, to leave. that's pretty bad for you not to want to go by it. Oh, it was horrific. I'm yeah. telling you, like genuinely, like even if it was nothing, like fuck my imagination for doing that to me because that was truly horrific. Like, yeah, one of the most horrifying things I ever went through. And then everything else that happened has all just been like nothing. Like I said, nothing after that has been like negative like yeah. things move around or whatever and i'm like hey like please don't do that and then it doesn't happen for a long time and then it happens again you know and i do the same thing please don't do that and right so yeah i i would say um i'd say i would say that i'm pretty confident about your your strength on because that like you know i've gone i've gone in the field with people mm-hmm. that i've worried about mm. i say i don't know about this guy or yeah. i don't know about this girl and anytime I've, because we've we've gone to Goatman's Bridge, we've been to the cemetery twice. Mm-hmm. And at any time that I didn't feel that you weren't strong enough, or I don't I like, was I don't like going with people that want it too much. Yeah, you know? I'm like, I I, I kind of just went to test my gear. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, but uh, like when when we went to Goatman's Bridge, uh, you know, Ghost Adventures made a big deal about that one. Yeah, no, it was just. Well, that, that, there was just a bunch of kids smoking pot, man. That, like, that, that was the thing, though. If y'all were to go just by yourselves, I think, probably a different story. I think we need to go. If we were to go back there again, we need to go on not, a, a not Tuesday that night. I'm, yeah, not, when not that out. I'm defending Ghost Adventures. I know that, that they script some stuff. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of those ghost shows do that. Uh, but yeah, if you have like a bunch of people there, mm-hmm. it's going to be hard to. to yeah, there were tons of people out that night. Yeah, the, yeah. the only thing I would say that was weird about that place is that I, I, I think you had walked off with mm-hmm. Andrew, uh, and um, I think uh, Scott was doing uh, he was doing the EVP session, mm-hmm. and uh, someone's spirit box mm-hmm. was beeping. Really? Like when he was asking questions, it was mm-hmm. beeping, and the spirit box is not supposed to beep. Right. It's supposed to scan. So it was be- it was beeping, answering yes no questions like one for no, two for yes. That's interesting. And I looked at Scott and I go, "Is it supposed to do that?" He goes, "No." That's like, oh no, I do remember that. Yeah, I do because I came back and he was on the middle of the bridge. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And all those people were sitting around him. And uh, and then that one dude, that one kid was that, lo- he was looking at me weird. Yeah, the one that had the heart on for, you know, he was like, "Yes, yeah, Scott, tell me more." Yeah. Yeah, I know who exactly you were talking about. Because I, I think I have a picture of us as a group mm-hmm. afterwards, yeah. and he was in that group. Yeah, I don't know. He just, like I said, people that want it too bad make me nervous. Yeah, because then they're they're super open. Mm-hmm. And because like when I was there, I didn't feel anything. I didn't no. feel anything. Yeah. The only thing I was worried about was falling down. You know what I felt? What mosquitoes? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. I was Good like, one. man. I was like, there are bugs everywhere. Yeah, it was. They were bugging you. You know what? Actually, though. I only somewhat take that back because me, Candace, and Lane had walked across. We'd gone down the creek and kind of walked across, Mm -hmm. and we were in kind of a small clearing, and there were just leaves everywhere. And it was just us, and Candace had said that it just, it felt weird. You know, it kind of felt like there were people there, but there weren't. It was, I would say that was probably the only thing. Like it was crowded? Yeah. That's weird. Hmm. Um, cause I know at that time, uh, I didn't have the greatest footing mm-hmm. and I, I think y'all were more worried about me falling yeah. down. I this was, was like, after was like, you were walking, right? Yeah. I had just started walking. I know. We were like Robert stay on the bridge. Yeah. <laughs> and you were telling me that, Hey, I'm going to the gold man's bridge. I'm going to be fine. And I go, what the fuck, Robert? <laughs> and so, and then like, didn't like Scott, he saw like some writings and stuff on the bridge like just graffiti right yeah but like stuff that's a little sus you know yeah. like you think you can uh, not to jump uh, jump subjects here you think you can get scott to go with us and to that house i don't know you think that'd be a good idea i'd be interested in seeing what he 
here's the thing like we, we the should way, take him we should take him and not tell him anything no yeah yeah i would be interested just the way that scott communicates with like things around him i'd be very interested in what he would say yeah because <clears throat> it could be something very simple where he could get rid of it yeah and that'll be a good closure i, I to- know i know i'm saying this on the air and he might hear this and i'm i'm sorry but you know how i am you know how i am i, mm-hmm. I say things i i love scott he's a great dude he's mm-hmm. he's vital to the paranormal community mm-hmm. but i i think he just thinks that we want to we want to learn his craft yeah. and, and i don't how, how do you feel about that i i feel like so scott has offered that to me if i wanted to learn i'd be mm-hmm. interested you know, would you be interested in like coming along and like us mentoring you and like i'm intrigued by it but i genuinely don't think that i have the strength like scott has to deal with some of the things that scott deals with like i'm interested but i also know that like i could not kick it like he does like and so when he goes into learning like teacher mode because he is you know he's a teacher um i'm always like yeah like i enjoy hearing it but also like there are things that i I'm not interested in knowing, you know? There are things yeah. in this world we do not understand. <laughs> understand. <laughs> I want answers. Okay, I'm going to say this, and I've never said this before, but if we were the Avengers, okay? Okay. The Avengers, you have to have a heavy hitter. Yeah. Like Thor. Yeah. So, Scott is our Thor. Oh, Scott is absolutely our Thor. <laughs> really? Not Hulk? Or just yeah. gonna... no. no, here's the thing. I don't think, Thor. I don't think, I can't think of one person I've ever met that feels so, like, energetically charged. Like, you're in Scott's space, and that man is just, like, vibrating with energy, man. If I, if I was going up against it, if I ever had that dream again, the first person I would call Scott. Yeah, yeah that's what I was thinking. I was kind of thinking that, you know, but... That only that was the only thing that happened at that house, right? That only thing. The well, that's that's the same house where like my radio would come on. There'd be divots in the couch and stuff yeah. like that. But that was the one where you said, "Get the fuck out of my room." Do yeah. not, yeah. And that was the first time I had ever like thought to say anything out loud. Like, was yeah. that before or after the nightmare? After. So yeah, you. It was definitely pissed off at you. Yeah. Oh, and it's the same one with uh, what's his name? Dividus. What was his name? Pon Kandarius. Pon Kandarius. Yeah, that house? Uh, Pon Kandarius was just like, man. Yeah, he really looked at me and said, Mm-mm, "Fuck this bitch." Yeah. And I was like, "Damn, okay." You, you know, I'll say this: like when I when I went to Phoenix and I was with my friend, mm-hmm. and uh, she lived right by the desert, and I had I had just bought a night vision camera i said hey let's go test it in the desert mm-hmm. and like it was not a full moon so it was super fucking dark yeah mm-hmm. and so we went out and we went out i just happened to pull out my k2 meter mm-hmm. and it went off and went you know because like three milligals is mm-hmm. a lot you mm-hmm. know that right yeah this thing was pegging at 24 milligals that's insane for like 10 minutes straight and there's like, nothing out there there's nothing out there it's desert i'd be like it's time to go inside so so no that's the thing though on so this one. we were walking back i go like let's go ahead and turn around and go back yeah. so we were started walking back it was still pegging at 24 oh, we so got, it was following you yeah so we got to the street and it was still pegging 24 mm-hmm. we went to her house and she goes she goes rob i don't want this shit in my house <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i called scott i go hey man I'm in Phoenix Mm -hmm. and I was in a desert and I got something following me and I got, and I explained to him what I had the camera had the, had the K2 meter is Mm -hmm. is pegging at 24 milligauss. He goes, okay, hold on. So he pulls out his gear and starts hitting some things and he says, okay, you got a nasty one. Mm -hmm. He says, he goes, I'm going to do some chants, have me on speaker. And I goes, he go, go get some salt. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, we went to go get some salt and we put it on the doorways mm-hmm. in front of the garage in the back door and and it, and, it, and the, all of a sudden the k2 meter stopped yeah so so this is a life lesson okay yeah when there's something strange in the neighborhood who you're gonna call <laughs> scott scott <laughs> scott thor <And> immediately <laughs> i'm calling scott yeah thor so <laughs> i mean i hear nothing but great things about him and if there's something that we, if we ever came across something like, that's why i kind of want him to go at this little yeah house there yeah. Uh, Scott, I would trust Scott. Yeah, I would too. Because you know, Scott, was, Scott, we love you. Yeah, you're a good dude. We, I know, truly. So, never met I was you. Weird. But I was I know thinking about, about him you. the other day, just randomly. Really? Wait, really? Yeah, I don't know. Just randomly, I was like, hey, I wonder what Scott's doing. Yeah, synchronicity. He's teaching. He's still teaching. So. Mm-hmm. Where, 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 where does he teach? You? I'm not gonna say where. Oh well, so. well off air. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you off air. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so, how do you feel about doing a podcast? 
This was fun. I enjoy it. Here's the thing. There's nothing I love more than the sound of my own voice. <laughs> but also apologies because I, I have a voice made for silent television. No, I, I like it. I miss it. Mm. I was I was you hear it every like for six years, so I know, I know. It's just so weird not to hear it no more. Robert, mm. I'm a yapper, man. Just I call me up on the phone, I'll be I talking. Know. I know, I don't have any friends at my job. You don't need any more friends. You've oh, got, that's true. That's you've true. got you've got us. <laughs> <laughs> no new friends. So I think I can I think this we almost went, well, we we went two hours. Did, Did we really? really? Yeah. Look, oh. we just be chatting. One one minute and fifty five seconds. <laughs> one minute. <laughs> 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 So you got any shout outs you want to do before we get off? No free promo. Okay. Mm. Steven? Um, Blair and the boys. I mean, I guess I can shout out Pond Kenderis, wherever you are. Thanks for leaving. Yeah. Thanks for leaving and like a good neighbor, stay the fuck yeah. over there. Yeah, and stay the over there. Yeah. Uh, quick shout out to, trying to think who, Wes Anderson. He, mm. sent, he sent us a letter. Uh, he calls me the pot father. So I like that. I'm changing your name on my phone right now. <laughs> the Pod Father. So is a guy. Is a guy that uh, he does his own podcast. He does. Po- he does politics, mm-hmm. sports, and the paranormal. I love. So uh, I love that that's such a, a wide and range he, of things to discuss. And he does it by himself. He has a great voice. Mm-hmm. He has a great voice, and he sent me a letter mm-hmm. the other day, just thanking me for being his pod father and he says keep up you know keep on putting out good shows and i love that for him yeah he's a good dude he's mm-hmm. a really good dude i i, I think uh like uh when i was like, i'll say this real quick when i was sick uh, i actually thought about not doing a podcast again mm-hmm. and i just wanted to get better yeah and he reached out to me uh on facebook no it was on i think uh x mm-hmm. reached out to me on x and he said hey man i noticed you haven't done a show in a while yeah. And I go, I go, let me call this dude because I'm not typing all this stuff. Yeah. So I called him and I had to start talking to him. And I said, uh, yeah, I'm, I've been real sick and, uh, you know, I'm trying to learn how to walk again. He goes, really? He goes, oh, I'm so sorry. He goes, hey, would you mind coming on my show and talking about it? Mm-hmm. I go, sure. So I went, I pulled all the gear out, got on the show, did his show. I was his first guest on it, on his show. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, I got interested in doing a podcast with you. I'm good. Well, then I'm also going to shout him out. Thank you for that. <laughs> so, yep. He's a good dude. Yeah. Uh, okay. I think I can do something with this show. You think? Yeah. Really? Yep. Hmm. So. You can even do a two-parter if you want to. I know. I could practically make this a two-parter. <laughs> so. Hey, anytime you want to come back on. Look, like I said, I do. It wasn't happen. that far, right? No, it's literally from my house to yours. Mm-hmm. 12 minutes. Yep. <laughs> I was like, wow. We were literally taking the boys to karate mm-hmm. and he was like i think i think uh because it was the came and lives over we, like close we went by the here. back side i still was go out to the front side to go yeah off, off of 114 and yeah. go past like water burger and all that stuff to, i'm not gonna explain exactly yeah and i was so. gonna say whoa whoa, <laughs> whoa wait <laughs> i'm not saying the streets or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. yeah i know what you're talking about though yeah, yeah. it's so, right there so i would cut that way and so mm-hmm. we were going the back way mm-hmm. i said caitlin lives right over here yeah it's my yeah. house I was so, like, really? It's not that mm-hmm. close. And we were like going to, when we put going uh, to your party, I was like, I go, man, we're going to, wow, it's right here yeah. by the boys. Right here. Right, yeah. <laughs> right across from, uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, um, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank mm-hmm. you for having very, me. Very, very yeah. interesting stories. And, yeah. Uh, for some reason, I feel like you have more. I just a couple, you know. Mm-hmm. We'll save that for part two. <laughs> part three. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, I'm going to try to put this out, put, put this out. Put, yeah. <laughs> Who says that? Put, put people. I don't know. <laughs> you say that. Uh, <laughs> I used to always say that at work, right? I go, yeah. Who says that? Who says that? Like you, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to try to put this out either probably tomorrow. All right. So I don't think I got to edit much of it. So mm-hmm. I'm going to tag all my people. Do it. Like, go watch this. Yeah. So where's, where's Andrew right now? Uh, he should actually be on his way home. He was like, you want to go to a super late dinner? And I was like, brother dog. <laughs> brother dog. <laughs> You're speaking my language. <laughs> super late dinners is what I thrive on. <laughs> yeah, we, sh- we should have dinner sometime. Should. I'm down. Okay. I'm down. There's a million places over here. Is there? Is there like some... Um, Robert's a so big uh, Robert's a big fan of Big Mountain uh, Mike Pizza. I am not a fan of Big Mountain um. Mike Pizza. <laughs> There is a good pho place right there off of 35. Okay. In Alliance. It's like called Noodles or something like that. The pho is huge. Do you like it? Have I ever told you what I want to do? 
What? Um, if I ever like win the lottery, come into a sum of money or whatever, I want to open a late night pho spot uh-huh. that I'd put near like a college campus or near a, like Smart. some bars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we, our name would be Pho King. And <laughs> uh-huh. anytime you walked in, my employees would be it would be required to be like, "Are you fucking hungry?" <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Yeah, and then like you, the way you order, I would have like the you know, are you fucking serious challenge, yeah. and be like a twenty gallon thing of pho, uh, right? Oh yeah. god, yeah, open fucking late. If, like, you that's that, so funny. if you do that for college, it's like, oh my god, I can get this for free. Yeah, if I eat it all, that's like an you instant. can't tell me kids that's aren't going to be like, yeah, let's go, to, let's go to the fucking noodle house. Yeah. Like, come yeah, on, that, that would yeah. be all over TikTok. Yeah, I'm all saying, over TikTok. I'm time. like, man, I need to open a restaurant. <laughs> you got to have the menu like uh, pho like named out I don't know if they're like fucking or some shit like yeah. that yeah you have to be really witty on it i think you you have yeah. to you have to put fucking on everything yeah, yeah. and your yeah. level could be like would you like it you know fucking mild or like <laughs> fucking hot like <laughs> yeah and like if, and if, if they if they try to go past the fucking you can't you can't serve no, and then like, when, they, when the waiter's there like how many fucking eggs do you want yes. how many fu- <laughs> how, oh, what's that your, the, what's your fucking whole, drink that'd be the whole shtick right? yeah. it'd be very dick's last resort right? yeah I like it yeah. yeah I like it so how many and then f- like fucking for, for birthdays it'd be happy fucking birthday <laughs> yeah let's see here yeah, okay we need to edit that out because somebody's gonna take somebody's that somebody's gonna steal my yeah, idea yeah I think on that note we need to go and call it <laughs> good night I, I, I kind of like these ideas good night and yeah, goodbye good, goodbye yeah.